Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Drunken Gorilla Painting. In this video today, I'm going to be showing you how I would paint an orc knob from the goth clan. So grab a seat, grab your brushes, and have your favourite grot bring you some squig juice. Let's get painting. On this model, we're going to be starting with the leather. That includes the trousers, boots and straps you find on various places around the model. We're going to be base coating these with a 50-50 mix of dried bark and scab and blight for the trousers, rhinox hide for the straps and boots, and gawthor brown for the shirt. All of these areas are then going to receive a wash of Agrax Earthshade making sure it doesn't pool too much in any of the recesses. These areas are now going to receive their first highlight, which will be the same colour they were initially base coated in. So for the trousers, it's a 50-50 mix of dried bark and scaven blight. For the boots and straps, it's rhinox hide. And for the shirt, it's gawthor brown. The boots and trousers are now going to receive another highlight, this time with Gawthor Brown. All of the leather is now going to receive a highlight of Bane Blade Brown. We want to focus this on the upper areas, being a bit more sparing than we were when we highlighted with Gawthor Brown. For the softer fabrics, namely the trousers and the shirt, I'm going to be applying some scratches, and I'm going to do this using a 50-50 mix of Ushabti Bone and Bane Blade Brown. To finish off the boots, to give them a sort of shine, we're going to be using pure white and applying it in small dots over the sharpest edges and points on the boots. As I'm sure many of you have noticed, a lot of the colour palette I'm using for highlights across the leather is the same. This is because I don't want the leather to be overstated. I want it to act as more of a backdrop for the rest of the model and not to draw too much attention to itself. We're now moving on to arguably one of the most important parts of any orc model, the green skin. I prefer a slightly more desaturated green when I'm painting my orcs, and to that end, we're going to be starting with a base coat of a 50-50 mix of Deathworld Forest and Rhinox Hide. It might take a couple of coats to get this on, but make sure you do it smoothly. We don't want to clog up any of that detail. Now 
Next, we're going to layer the mussel with pure death world forest. Again, making sure this is slightly watered down to help it flow smoothly onto the model. Now, we're going to try and add some depth to the muscle. To do this, we're going to be using a diluted wash of Agrax Earthshade, about a one-to-one -one mix of Agrax and Larmian Medium. Put this on relatively heavily, but again, we want to make sure that it's not pooling anywhere too much, as that's going to end up clogging the detail and ruining the effect we're going for. We're now going to bring some colour back to the model, returning to Deathworld Forest. We're going to be layering this on once again, but I want to draw attention to how we're putting the paint onto the model. As the paint we'll be applying is slightly watered down, we'll be building up the colour over a few layers. I find painting it on in a pattern similar to the kind of striations you'd expect from muscle gives a much more natural, interesting looking end result. We're going to follow this up with a more controlled, discerning layer of 50-50 Deathworld Forest and Elysian Green, focusing this on the higher, raised parts of the model. Next is a pure highlight of Elysian Green, a bit thicker than you might expect, as there is a highlight to follow this. Next up is an Ogren Camo highlight. We're going to be focusing this on the very edges and extremes of muscle, also the fingers, knuckles, and sharper points on the face. Now, you could leave the skin there if you wanted to, but I like my orcs to look a little bit more fleshy, and to that end, we're going to be working in some pinker highlights on the skin. Starting with Kislev Flesh, we're going to be focusing this on the softer areas, like the elbows, knuckles, and areas on the face, like the ears and nose. Focusing in the same kind of areas as before, we're going to be using Cadian Flesh Tone, this time being a little bit more picky with the highlights we're choosing. To finish the skin, we're going to be using a red glaze. This is made of about one part Lamy Medium to one part Caraburg Crimson, with just a very little touch of corn red in there. We're going to be applying this over all the areas we did in the more pink flesh tone. Again, be sparing with this glaze, because it can ruin the effect we're going for. Less is more. And with that, the skin is done. The skin is now done but there's still quite a few areas related to it that need addressing. We're going to start with the eyes, giving them a base coat of corn red. Follow this with a layer of Mephiston red. This is then met with a further layer of Evil Sun Scarlet and finished with a very specific dot of Troll Slayer Orange at the centre of the eyes. 
you can actually follow this up with a further white dot at the very end. I didn't take footage of this, because I must admit, I'd forgotten I'd done it. We're now going to be looking at the mouth, specifically the tongue and gums. These are going to be base coated in Screamer Pink. This is probably the best point in the video to mention this, but you might be noticing some of the texture on the lips. This goes back before to the skin texture we were putting on with the, with the pink, like the Kislev flesh and Cadian flesh tone. Just ran on in vertical lines down the lower lip. I find this gives it a lot of texture and is one of the best tips I've picked up for how to paint orcs. The gums and tongue are now washed with pure Adrax Earthshade. Next, we layer the tongue and gums with Screamer Pink. The next layer is a 3 to 1 mix of Screamer Pink and White. These areas then get a further highlight of a 1 to 1 mix of Screamer Pink and White. And to reinforce the wetness you'd expect from these areas, we're finishing with a dot highlight of pure white on the gums and tongue. Areas on the model like teeth and bone are now going to receive their first base coat of Bane Blade Brown. We're then going to be layering with Zandri Dust, making sure to leave the furthest areas that you'd expect to be in shadow remaining with Bane Blade Brown. Next, we apply a layer of Shabti Bone on the extreme highlights of the teeth and bone. We're then returning to our trusty Agrax Earthshade and putting it all over the teeth and bone. Finally, we're layering back up with the Shabti Bone. On the teeth in particular, don't be afraid to paint once again in striations to give the impression of growth lines on the teeth and add some texture to it. It's now time for this orc's manicure, starting with a base coat of Rhinox Hide. We're then going to pick out the fingernails with Caliban Green. The more extreme edges of the fingernails are going to receive a thin highlight of Caliban Green and White Scar in a 50-50 mix. Finally, the very tips of the fingernails and the teeth are going to receive a dot highlight of pure white. This is to really once again reinforce the sharpness of these items. Many parts of the model are bare metal and as you'd expect from any orc they don't take the best care of their gear and equipment. As such, it's going to be quite rusted. We're going to be starting this with base coats of Lead Belcher and Balthazar Gold respectively. You can pick out essentially whichever areas you'd like to be these colours. Personally, I prefer to reserve Balthazar Gold for plates and glyphs. All of these areas now receive a wash of Agrax Earthshade. The areas we base coat in Balthazar Gold now receive an additional wash of Athonian Camo Shade. Next up, for the areas we base coated in Lead Belcher, they're now going to receive a glaze of Doom Bull Brown. This is quite thinned out, maybe one part Doom Bull Brown to three parts water. And again, we're trying to keep very little paint on the brush itself. 
this is going to be glazed towards the recesses in the model. So as you can see, there are some patches that are just left out on the open, but generally I'm trying to push the color more towards the recesses and joints on the metalwork. This is then followed up with a more discerning glaze of Mornfang Brown, applied in the same way, but less of it. With the exact same method as applying the glazes previously, we're going to be glazing Stegodon Stale Green onto the areas that were base coated in Balthazar Gold to build up some oxidation around the rivets and cracks. A further glaze of Sotec Green is used. Once again, we're being more discerning with this wash, focusing it more and more into the details. The bronze areas receive a final glaze of Sotec Green and White, about a 50-50 mix, before diluting it. Now, the metal areas aren't done, but we're going to be coming back to them later, and you'll see why further into the video. On various areas on the Orc models, you'll notice they have bits of cord or twine. In this case, you can see it on the back of the trousers, stitching it together, holding the rack of teeth on the trophy rack, and also wrapped around the barrel of his gun, presumably to hold it together, which is the height of orc engineering. We're going to be base coating these areas in pure black. These areas then receive an all-over highlight of Dark Reaper. We're trying to keep this line thin, but make sure it does follow the entirety of the curve. Next up, we use Thunderhawk Blue in the same manner as before, but once again, we're using less of it, focusing it more towards the sharper points on the cords. Finally, we're going to be using very small amounts of Fenrisian Grey to really push the colour on this cord. And to finish, pure white dot highlights on the very ends of the cord and highest points on strings. There's now really only one area of the model left, which is the armour plating. I'm going to be painting this model as an orc goth, because the goths are the toughest, meanest greenskins around. If you don't want to paint it as a goth, I won't hold it against you. After all, it's your loss. The colours I'm going to be using for the armour plates are black, rakarth flesh and corn red. You can pick and choose whichever plates you want to pick out with these colours. All of these areas are now going to receive a wash. In the case of Rakarth Flesh, it's a 50-50 wash of Agrax Earthshade and Larmian Medium, whereas for the black and corn red, it's just pure Agrax Earthshade. We're going to be picking out some definition on these areas with recess shading. In the case of the corn red, we're going to be using a shade of 50-50 black and Dryad Bark, watered down a little bit to help it flow, into the recesses. In the case of Rakarth Flesh, we're going to be using watered down Mornfang Brown to pick out the details. We'll also be doing this onto the black. Oh, 
highlighting the white areas now, we're going to go back in with Rakhar Flesh. This is then followed with a finer highlight of Pallid Witch Flesh, focusing on the raised areas and rivets. The white areas are finished with a little dot of pure white on the absolute extremities. Highlighting the red areas now, we're starting with an edge highlight of Mephiston Red. As always, we're following this with a finer highlight using Evil Sun Scarlet. And we're finishing the red areas with dot highlights of Troll Slayer Orange on the absolute sharpest edges. The model is now going to receive an all over matte varnish. I'm using Winsor & Newton, but you could use whatever you want. Now that the model has been hit with matte varnish, we can go in for the final step, which is an edge highlight of Stormhost Silver. This is going to go not only on the metal areas, which as you might recall from before, I said weren't quite finished, but also on the edges of the black armour. The reason we're doing this now, as opposed to before the matte varnish, is generally when you matte varnish metal like this, it loses a lot of its shine, which really flattens out the model, which isn't what we want. After you've picked out all these edges and scratches, the model is done. Whether you're painting orcs from bad moons, death skulls, or crumping gits alongside Gazgul himself, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have anything you'd like to see in upcoming videos, want some clarification, or something else entirely, please let me know down in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.